Okie doke, very important part of the job, our transition to hardware. And when it comes to transition, uh, when working with the travertine, most of the times I will use travertine threshold. This is this piece, two, usually two inches wide with the nicely finished edges. And uh, it just finishes nicely. Uh, however, you can also bubble edge of the stone slightly and it will create nice bubbled uh, rounded edge so instead of uh, installing threshold we can just nicely finish edge of tile and you will have nice continuation from the hardwood to solid pieces uh, another option is metal Schluter edge there are different types straight edge round edge the particular one that I like is uh, round deck Rondek is the code for Schluter uh, systems that I use. It's uh, 125 size because the uh, Schluter system has different sizes and we, we want to have the biggest one, the thickest one for the thickest surface and the maximum is 125 in size. Rondek is the name of the profile. Uh, it comes in different colors. Chrome, bronze, brushed, brass, whatever you wish. Uh, so this also can be used and I've used it on some other of my videos so we can see over there but in this case we have a threshold uh, that homeowner, re homeowner requested and threshold will be usually slightly higher than the surface of the tile uh, I might do it on the same line or maybe 16 of an inch higher uh, and then we will fill transition from the threshold to the wood with a flexible caulking that will match uh, in a color to the color of the grout making this nice and neat so we want we starting slowly moving forward uh, first thing I'm gonna cut door gems like I did before when getting to the toilet room level nicely lies on the surface of the tile and we will transfer this to the door gem and this is how we're gonna cut it so we're gonna do it on two sides and Later I'm going to work on those pieces, I'm going to measure and cut the notch for the threshold obviously. We're going to work on that cuts here and move forward slowly to this section of the floor. I'll show you how that goes, I mean not really a lot changes other than a lot of measurements and preparation. So the first thing, make sure to cut your door gems and make sure to think about uh, about the transition. What, what would you like to use for the transition? Um, so, so this is it. Section over there, pretty much finished. All right. So working on a transition to the hardwood. The final pieces here on the main floor, and those are temporary in place. They nothing is glued yet. I'm just uh, cutting the, all the tiles first to, uh, to ensure that they're gonna fit before actually installing them. This has been cut. This is how our threshold will look like. This is just temporary threshold. This one is too short. I have to get a longer one. But uh, I will leave the space for that. And threshold can be added tomorrow, anytime later. So the, the tile's been notched nicely for the threshold. And also those pieces cut in 45 angles accordingly to shape of our room. Um, so the next step, I'll make something set and I will put those pieces together nicely and we'll give you an update a little bit later. Okay, so I'm through with the section over here. It was pretty challenging section because those corner cuts are always difficult to insert because uh, most of them is one-time installation. So once we will song them in a tin set, we have very little chances to actually remove them once the tin set will catch them. So often if you have a situation where you have to remove tile or lift it and it's hard to do so, Breaking it is the only way to do it. I've been doing this every so often in order to remove certain pieces that 
needed more setting component I have to break the piece, cut a new piece and uh, adjust it once again uh, this happened to this tile actually I was pushing this hoping that it will work but there was actually too much of the tin set that uh, was bringing sides of the tile higher than this tile and this tile creating lippage and I had to break it but anyway section over here is done uh, tomorrow we're going to follow up with the shower curb a little bit tiling front and the inside part but before I do that um, I will do the final stage of waterproofing this is the last section that needs waterproofing and I left this for the very last simply to prevent from too much of the traffic on a shower curb and those are pretty sharp edges of the cement board and if you walk on that too much you're just pretty much destroying the the waterproof because you everything can be destroyed so in order to prevent this since it's so important to do it correctly I left this section for the last moment and I'll be using hydro barrier combined with a, a fiberglass mesh tape that uh, is six inches wide and will go on the entire top of the curb so so this is how it how it's always waterproof on my projects and yeah so I'm gonna work on that part right now you can see this uh, on the other videos of mine about waterproofing uh, I've been presenting this several times since it's very one of the essential parts of each job waterproofing in this case I will show you final stage I do not have Peter with me to film me and it's getting really late it's in the evening so I still have to do this so it's dry for tomorrow in order for me to slowly move forward with the pieces on the front of the curb and inside of the curb and get it ready for our long trash hold pieces window seals long pieces pretty much that we planning to use instead of cutting shorter tiles Alright, so waterproofing part already finished for the curb. I'm removing my pieces of cardboard that I used to protect the shower floor tiles. So I'm getting in a blue color. So this is pretty much how it looks like. And I have a video that explains uh, waterproofing in great detail uh, how to apply a membrane and uh, how to cut the product that I recommend uh, so you can click link that I will try to have it somewhere around in this moment or just check on my channel I have several videos that explains different parts of waterproofing what goes where so so like I said, this is the major, ma major section where usually shower starts to leak, is the shower curb. This is why I really took extra step, extra time to, and uh, waited to the last moment with waterproofing it. Uh, leaks will usually start in the corners there, sections like here and over there. So those flat surfaces like bench or curb, niche are really really extremely important uh, one of another rules when it comes to floor tile installation keep that in mind floor tile goes first to the shower curb then we are tiling shower curb and tiles in the front of the shower curb will actually sit on top of the floor tiles this is why I didn't move forward in a previous stage of the job you see everything on the curb been exposed uh, shower main pretty much done with the tile work so once I have all the cuts and tiles ready around the curb then I can slowly start figuring out the shower curb so so this is very important for the way water travels if we have a water water dripping from the 
shower door or from you when you're walking out from the shower. The goal is for water to actually travel, travel here and here, not travel directly to this uh, connection over here. If I would tell to the shower curb, grout eventually will crack because it always cracks in such transitions. Water will be sipping on that curb all the way to the subfloor underneath the tile. If tile sits on top of the floor, water will not really travel over there. It will be will accumulate somewhere on a tile surface and eventually will vaporize or you will eventually have a chance to see it and simply wipe it off. So this is very important. This is very important step and rule to follow and to remember about. Shower curb goes always on top of the main floor tiles and also on top of the shower floor tiles, like I did uh, before. I explained it in a video from shower installation. They sit on top of the floor, same reason. All right, I gotta go, it's getting late. We have almost eight o'clock, but stay tuned. There's more to come on this very project. All right, so we got to the point where we uh, pretty much uh, finished section with the, with the tiling uh, for the floor. And I would like to give you an update uh, how we ended up cutting around the vanities. I showed you how to remove those tiles and uh, how to make sure that vanity stays where it's supposed to and to not, how to not damage vanity and how to pretty much get ready uh, for an installation and do the demo when we have a tile floor under the, the cabinets. But all the tiles were been done, everything been finished and we have a, the tiles already cut uh, to the uh, closest point and the rest will get covered with the shoe molding. Each time we uh, have to tile to the vanity I would recommend to have a shoe mold especially in the cases when we have a tricky corners like this uh, present so original shoe mold that was here been removed and I'm gonna reinstall it and it will cover nicely transition so once everything finished you won't be able to tell if tile work continues under the cabinets or if it's actually uh, to the cabinets so, so, we, so assuming in cases when you have a tile work going all, all the way under the cabinets, you don't have to remove those cabinets. You can little by little gently remove all the tiles and later do nice precise cutting and uh, have this finished in the way it should be. We have the last piece already waiting over here. This is the cut that is missing. It will go over there. So as you can see, we've been able to nicely cut all the pieces and now our shoe moldings, I'm trying to find the piece that I have, that originally was over here, will nicely cover this cut. So it will look exactly the way it's supposed to. So working around the cabinets is often tricky, challenging and 
uh, we have to take extra precautions and also be very careful and very precise but in this case we've been successful in doing everything nicely and this is how it's done another interesting element that helps us during such installation is leveling system that I use on my jobs it's a perfect level master T-lock for larger format tiles this is 1 16 of an inch uh, space very thin helps us create very thin joints and this is an element that gets later removed And we have more of those tiles that we did. The time has come to put final piece of the puzzle and it appears that this is that tile, this pencil piece. Um, we did all the work, we just finished working on the baseboards, we almost done. Also over there we installed already our transition, our threshold here and everything been very nicely cut adjusted also in the closet I mean closet water closet toilet room this is how it looks like you have baseboards 11 inches tall total for the request of the homeowner and and yes so this is how it looks like so let's go ahead and put the final piece because uh, it was a lot of work uh, from the day one when we started tiling. This is the last piece of the puzzle, pencil called also Bulnos One, and it appears to be mounted here. Pushing nicely like the previous pieces that I've been showing you around the accent on the sides of the walls making sure that it's nice and even okay I'm removing any tin set like I said I'd like to squeeze some tin set for the transition drywall and there you go this is the first the last piece for that project what we have left we have left ground work that we will start tomorrow pretty much I will show you a few photos quick update from grouting but I have a video about the grouting already so I don't know if I want to repeat myself um, but this is the very last piece
Alright, so moving forward with the floor and when it comes to large format tiles you don't necessarily have to spread grout all over the surface. We pretty much focusing on the grout joints only in such case. If stone is filled with no holes you don't have to go with the grout all the way with the tile. We're pretty much focusing on just the ground joints, each joint separately, pack as much as we can in the ground spaces. And this is what I'm doing right now. And in a second, I'll be able to wash it off. Starting the project. I, they've been gently removed and now we are putting them back the way they used to be. And as you can see, it's really hard to tell if the floor been redone or not. If uh, this is the way it used to be. Finishing gun, and now just pretty much shooting those trim pieces back to their original uh, position. To pack too many nails, usually just one will be enough. And watch your fingers because you don't want to get shot with it. So, this is how I'm going to continue this, and once again, here we have the section the way we did all the cutting right I filled the space under the leg with the grout to reinforce it additionally so so this is how it's done what you can see is our final product this is floor that we tiled that we grouted and we prepared that I was showing you and explaining how to do it. Uh, the next step for us will be to put sealer. And sealer, you apply it with a spray or with a sponge or with a uh, towel, depends. And remember to put sealer before the first use of bathroom. Later, if you put it away for too long, later it might be too late. And this is another thing that I'm going to do. Uh, for this particular floor, um, in the meantime, I also created a video about sealer application and how to put sealer, about different types of sealer. So you can uh, click the link that you probably see somewhere right now. I'm referring you to this video because over there I'm explaining different types of sealer and
how to use it, how to apply it, all the important information. So, uh, so I'm referring you to this video to see how I'm applying sealer on this very job. This is video from this project and uh, watch it because some good stuff over there for you uh, if you would like to hear what I got to say. But this is our floor and uh, we're pretty much finished other than sealer. When it comes to application it's the same scenario as for the shower walls. Right, you spray it, you let it get absorbed by the stone, by the grout, and then wipe it off. All right, so we on our project again, working on the tub, and I will give you a quick presentation in slideshows how it was done. This, this clip is not about really tub installation, but this is an interesting tub with the interesting plumbing fixtures that need spe special um, adjustments. So, so this is how it will go. So we're doing water test. Before putting tub, we're gonna we are checking if there's no any water coming out through the connections that we made. And we're washing the lines pretty much. It looks like it's gonna work just fine. Alright. So our plumbing fixtures are uh, nicely mounted. We did a quick test for uh, leakage. Uh, everything seems to be fine. So the next step will be to put the tub in. But before we put the tub in, I will disconnect the faucet just so it's easier for me to put the tub in place. But here, in a few words before I will cover this, because once we will have the tub, we won't be able to really see all this interesting uh, plumbing. So we did our pipes, our trims here, those are two shadow valves uh, that turns off the water. Then we have those long two arms mm, uh, angling to the, uh, to the faucet. And those pieces actually re are reinforcement pieces so those pipes won't fly because 
this is pretty long uh, distance so without any additional reinforcement on that height they would be very easy to damage to break accidentally and then of course cause the flood so it goes all the way to our faucet we have our handheld uh, more vintage design and caught cold and hot water we can use either a faucet here or shower here or both combined together so so this is how it looks like uh, from here right now and and yes so the next step will be to disassemble this and slowly start working with the tub and later put the faucet back in place We are performing tests for the drain, for the overflow. Remember to do it. Everything looks really nice. Alright, so our freestanding tub is in place. Uh, we already have water running, uh, we already test everything. So this is pretty much the way it looks. The tub came with the fixtures, it was uh, included with the tub for this specific finish. Water supply lines from the floor everything is exposed so really precise adjustment was required for that and we connected the train from underneath from the basement uh, with a rubber coupling we connected two PVC pipes inch and a half PVC pipes with a rubber coupling that works perfect in such situations and tub itself it doesn't really have any permanent fix to the floor it sits on the legs uh, so what I did I siliconed on the outside on the back part only and I left the uh, front uh, without silicone to not to make it look clean pretty much because silicone would make this look not as clean as it looks right now so it helps uh, uh, to prevent tap from movement but also plumbing holds the tub in place the drain plumbing fixtures are fixed to the wall with those uh, brackets I've been showing this to you during the installation how that went it came with the longer pipes that we cut to uh, make them fit to our application and this is the closest pretty much where the tub will go as you can see fixtures we cut those to the minimum and we and we had the goal is for the handheld to be in line where the tub is so any water dropping from the handheld drops to the tub so so we have good access for maintenance, nice fixtures, nice finish and, and this is pretty much the way everything looks. 
right now. As you can see, we have a Moen uh, plumbing fixtures with a diverter, uh, all the rub brands finish. This is how they look like. And on the other side, we have just regular valve with the grub bars and two rain shower heads. Looks really nice, really decent sized shower. So all the fixtures have been done. Tile work, of course, finished long time ago. I showed you how to seal it, how to grout it, and toilet we just did, and of course our tub. This is our freestanding tub that we just finished installing, and um, everything turns out great. Really nice, clean looking work. And I really like this tub. I mean, it saves some space, uh, looks different from what you used to see for last, I would say, 50 years in homes. More vintage look. Back in the day, this is how it used to look like in the first bathrooms. So yeah, the next last update that I will give you will be once we will have the shower door in place because we don't have a door yet this is still to come tomorrow so we're going to have a frame frameless shower enclosure to the hive of the shower heads to pretty much tie it nicely and get it ready for homeowners to use it so this is how everything looks really really nice we pretty much finish and I'll touch base with you in a, f in a moment.